creating our first dashboard in this session we will discuss about creating our first dashboard so first thing before we start creating our dashboard is that grafana is only a visualization tool by default it doesn't have any mechanism to store the data okay so if you want to create a dashboard you need to have some kind of data sources it can be mysql database or it can be influx database it can be graphite or it can be any other supported data sources okay because what grafana is going to do is it is just going to connect to your data source and then it is going to create beautiful visualizations it is going to give you the ability to create beautiful graphs you know beautiful visualizations and things however grafana itself doesn't store any of the data which you have okay so if you if i click here on the plus on the left side and i can go to dashboard now here i have an option to adding new panel and let's click on add new panel and then here if you notice under the query window we have something called default okay and here we have lots of other data sources available okay so first thing we need to do is we should be creating our data source so we should be able to see that created data source here and then we'll be able to select that data source and then create our dashboard on top of that data source okay so right now i'm just going to go back again and then i'm going to click on configuration and from the configuration we have option of selecting data source that's one way of going to data source option the other way is you can go to home option and in this case i'm just going to discard it so you click on home option and then there you have something called add your first data source so if you click on here basically this is just going to take you to the add new data source option okay so that's one way and the way i prefer is going to configuration and then going to data sources and after that go and click on add data source okay now in our example we are going to connect to mysql database so i need to select mysql database but you can connect to lots of other available data sources okay we will see connecting to some of different data sources as well in this case we can just go ahead with mysql and now select or click on select option here and then you will be going to the settings option of that data source in this case now i have been moved to mysql connection data source now here i need to provide host name and database username and the password of the database to which i want to connect to now in your case i believe you should be having a database and also you should be having the tables to which you want to connect to in my case uh, let me show you what i have done so as you remember for uh, grafana we used mysql database so in that mysql database i just created one more table which is called matrix and in that matrix table i'm just sending some dummy data that data is basically kind of cpu utilization data and that data we are going to use for creating the visualization so let me connect to mysql and show you how that data looks like okay so now to connect to mysql you can use mysql command and then space hyphen u you need to provide the username here in this case the username which i have is grafana and then you need to type hyphen p and then you can provide the name of the database so in this case our database is grafana db hit enter and then it is going to ask for password so give the password which you have and then you are going to be connected to mysql and by default it is using grafana database because that's the database we passed when we connected to this mysql client now here i can do something like select or let's do show star or actually the syntax is show tables so we can once we do show tables you can see here this is the table which is called matrix this is the one which i have created 
so other than this table all the other tables are grafana application related tables okay so i'm not installing mysql again i'm just going to use the same mysql which is used by grafana application as well and inside that i have just created one table which is called matrix and if we want to see the data of this a table is so we can do select star from matrix and let's say we just want to see 10 records so i'm going to use limit 10 hit enter and then you can see that's the data we have okay so we have dt which is date time we have cpu which is like cpu utilization then we have io weight which is io weight and then we have idle time of this system okay again this is just the dummy data which i'm inserting to this database every second using one script okay so here you can see on the other side i already have this script running which is actually inserting one record every one second along with some random numbers okay so this is something which you don't need to do if you already have data you can just uh, connect to that data in my case i had to create this table and then i'm going to connect to this table so the things to remember is now we will be needing a connection information to connect to this database and then connect to this table which is called matrix okay so now let's go back to grafana again so here in the settings i need to give the host name on which mysql is installed so in this case we have mysql installed on the same machine where grafana is installed so in that case i can give local host and the port on which mysql running is 33 Zero 06 okay in your case if you have mysql installed on a remote server okay which is different than the server on which grafana is installed in that case you need to change here you need to change local host and you need to provide the actual host name or the ip address of the server where mysql is installed then here you need to provide the name of the database to which you want to connect to in this case database is called grafana db so i have given that and the username is type the username and password in this case i have given the username and password and then that's all you need then you can click on save and test and if it works and if if grafana is able to connect to mysql then it is going to show a success message otherwise it is just going to show failure message or the errors which is it is getting so i'm just going to now click on save and test and let's see what happens okay now here you see data source updated and database connection is okay so i see all the green signals which means everything is completely okay and we are able to connect to this data source now if you see here on the top this is the default name of this data source which is called mysql now let's say i want to change it and i want to give some meaningful name so i can give it name of matrix or let's call it matrix data source so for data source i'm going to type ds and matrix in the beginning so whatever naming convention which your organization follows you can follow those naming convention and then you can click on save and test again because we have changed the name so we must be clicking on save and test so once you do that again it is going to say data source updated also you are going to see the connection ok message again and that's the indication that now it is working now let's say if you want to make this data source as the default data source whenever you create a panel in that case you can click this default to basically you can turn it on and then matrix ds is going to be the default data source whenever you have any new panel created so let me turn it off and click on save and test and then let's see what happens when we go to plus icon on the left side and go to dashboard so I'm going to press control key while I'm selecting dashboard so it op opens on a new tab. Now it is opening in a new tab.
okay now here I'm going to select uh, select add new panel now if you see when we do add new panel here we see some other data source we don't see our data source as the default one so if I click on this drop down and then I can see the new data source which we have created which is called matrix underscore DS now I want to keep matrix underscore DS as the default data source so in that case we should be able to change it to or turn it on and then click on save and test again and then you can just close this I'm just going to close this panel and this is something custom which I have already made I'm going to show you exactly how we can make like this now let's go to plus and click on dashboard and now here we should be able to see option to create a new panel once we cl click on add new panel okay now here in the default as of now I still see I still do not see matrix DS okay so I have to see what what's going on here so now we can click on plus and now we can go on to create a new dashboard so I'm going to click on plus then I'm going to click on dashboard while I'm holding the control key so what it will do is it is going to open this in a new tab or otherwise you can also right click and then you can click on open link in new tab so once you do that now you should be able to see an option to create a new panel so click on add new panel and in the add new panel you should have an option of query and under the query you should be able to see some data sources and if you click on the drop down you should be able to see the data source which you have created in this case we have created matrix underscore ds so I'm going to select this and then this is the option which I get okay so by default from the matrix data source it has selected one table name which is called alert okay so whatever you see after from is your table name so we don't want alert table the table which we have is you already know that is called matrix so if you click on alert okay just left click on alert and here you will have an option to type matrix okay once you start typing couple of the letters of your table then the table is going to be sh uh, shown here and you can select the table so in this case I'm going to select matrix that's the table which we have and the second thing which we need to do is we need to select a column which is having a date time okay so one thing which you need to remember about Grafana is Grafana basically deals with a time series kind of data sources okay which is also called telemetry data sources so basically all your data source must have a column which is having a date and time okay so in my case I already have a table which is having a column which is which is having date time basically okay so that column name is called DT so in that case if I click here by default it is showing a column name which is called CPU okay so here you can see we we also have a column named CPU but this is not the one which is having date time date time is in the DT column so in that case I need to click on this column okay as you see once I move my mouse cursor there on the CPU it changes to a hand symbol okay so once you click here you will be getting an option to select other columns okay so these are the other columns of my matrix table so in this case I'm going to select DT DT is the column which is having date time okay so until now if you see we do not have any option or we, we don't really see anything here but we will figure that out soon okay so now we have selected a table name in the from clause and also in the time column we have selected a column which is basically having a date time 
and then this is the statement select statement where you select all the columns or all the visualization which you want to see okay in this case i want to see maximum cpu utilization so we have selected or rather this was the default option which was coming but if you want to change this column to any other column you can click on here on the cpu and then you are going to see all the other available columns okay so you know our data source has other columns like io weight and idle other than cpu so we see all these columns here once we click on the default column option so here i'm going to keep selecting cpu and then here on the if you click here on the plus you will have options of using aggregate functions you will have an option of using alias and you will have an option of selecting more columns so in this case first i will click on aggregate functions because i want maximum cpu utilization okay so in that case i'm going to select aggregate function and then i'm going to select maximum and once you click on aggregate maximum you are going to get an alias as well so this alias by default is the same column name i'm going to click on this and then going to change it to max underscore cpu okay hit enter and that's all you need to do here now let's say if you want to add one more column okay in that case you can click again on this plus symbol and then you can click on column and then it is going to create a new row under this select section and here you see we have the column name cpu shown by default let's say we want to change it to idle so we can change it to idle and let's say we want to see the minimum of idle time so we can change the aggregate function to minimum and in the alias name we can change it to min underscore idle hit enter and now you have two columns okay and on which you have performing some aggregations by the way right now we are working on query editing mode this is very useful which i really like to work with uh, this mode uh, however if you already have your custom query made you can use that custom query directly so we'll learn about that as well now the reason as of now you have not seen the data is that is because of this where filter okay so i'm just going to click here on the macro and once you click on the macro you should be able to see an option of remove so i'm just going to click on remove and then once we do that once we no longer have any filter we can see our data okay so by default you see in the group by we have interval which is actually anything which is starting with a dollar symbol that is a variable okay so here dollar interval means is whatever interval you are going to select from here okay here you see you have refresh dashboard and then you have this these are the default intervals so whatever interval you select here that's the interval which is going to be reflected there okay again if you want to remove this you can remove this otherwise you can just leave it as it is or let's say you want to change this interval to different intervals you have an option to do that as well so in my case i'm just going to leave it as it is because this is just a sample dashboard which we are creating okay now this dashboard as of now does not have a name the it has a default name which is called panel title okay so you can click here on the panel title and then you have some other options but by the way if you just click here on if you just see on the right side you have something called panel properties okay so in in case you don't see this panel properties that is might be because you have already clicked on this close options pane so if you have clicked on close options pane in that case you are just going to see something like this and then you can click on show options and it is going to show you the panel properties now here on the panel properties under the settings we can change the panel title so i'm going to change it and going to call it cpu utilization panel with matrix ds okay that's the data source which we are using 
and if you want you can provide some description this is completely optional I'm just going to copy and paste the same thing here so if you notice as soon as you provide some description you are also going to see one eye symbol here on the panel on the top left side so once I hover over to that section it is going to show me the description whatever description is written here okay so it is a good way when we have even you have like four or five different panels on your dashboard it is a good approach that you define a description name for each of the panels so your user can understand what is the purpose of each of the panels okay in this case let me make it CPU utilization using custom script okay so that's all once I hover over here let me just save it okay so basically it takes some time to refresh and once you click on here you are going to see the new message has starting to appear okay this one thing about giving panel title and description the other things which you can do is you can change the visualization so by default the default one is graph but let's say if you want some other type of visualizations you can do that as well again remember the query which you are using here is going to be different based on the visualizations which you are choosing for example if you see here on the stat it is going to show you only one option so the query which you need to create for stat is going to be different than the one which we have created here for graph dashboard or graph visualization okay so we'll see about other things later on now if you just scroll down you have something called display so you can play with displays and different options and based on whatever changes you make here the graph is going to get changed so if I enable bars or if I let's say disable lines you can see the lines option has gone you can enable it again you can change the line width let's make it 7 and you can see now I have very thick line okay then again in the area field you can select different options and you can see the fill has changed and in the fill gradient again you can select something different and you will see the gradient has changed so you have an option to make changes on how you want this panel to look like okay those are all available under the visualization display properties so if I enable these points and let's say we change the radius of these points in this case we don't see any any difference but again depend depending on the visualizations which we have selected you are going to see different visualizations when you make changes here okay now we will discuss some different options in our upcoming sessions for now you have understood some of the basic things about creating a panel okay so when you create a panel you need a data source to connect to so first thing you should always create a data source then you can go ahead creating a dashboard and inside the dashboard you need to create a panel okay and when you create the panel you can define the queries here and you can save the panel with the panel title and the panel description and then you can hit on save so once you click on save it is going to ask for a dashboard name so I'm going to call it example 01 CPU let's call it CPU utilization dashboard and we can save it under general okay and click on save and now we have our beautiful dashboard ready this only having one panel okay now let's say if I want to have a different panel which is almost similar and we just want to change that from max CPU to min CPU minimum CPU so in that case you can come here onto the title and you can click here on the drop down option and you have an option of duplicate under the more option so you can click on duplicate and everything is going to get duplicated then you can 
come here and go to edit and this way I can just quickly go to the query and I can change this aggregate from max to min and let's say I don't want this column then you can click here on the column once you do that it is going to give you an option of remove so I just got rid of idle so the only column which I have now is CPU column and we are now seeing the minimum CPU utilization and also I'm going to change alias name to min underscore CPU hit enter you can save it and you can you need to provide some description about what is the kind of change which you are making so I'm going to call it adding minimum CPU utilization panel and click on save that's all it's been saved now you can click here on the go back arrow or you can press escape so I'm just going to click here on the go back and now we have two panels ready again if you want to resize or if you want to rearrange you can do that okay so if you want to let's say you want to make it a bit longer you can do that if you want to show it just parallel to each other you can do it or if you want to show it under each other you can do that as well so that's about creating a dashboard and also being able to visualize that now by default this is going to be refreshed whenever you hit refresh dashboard option from here and let's say you want to want this dashboard to be auto refreshing every 30 seconds in that case you can click here on the drop down which is next to refresh and you can select the interval in this case let's say we want this dashboard to be changing or refreshing automatically every 30 seconds so we can do we can select 30 seconds okay so now every 30 seconds this data will keep on changing and you will always see the latest visualization